Hey crafty friends, it's Christina. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on project number three in our cards and crafts series for Valentine's Day. And today we're actually going to be doing two projects. I'm still calling it number three, but it's going to be two projects. And the first one is going to be playing with this wire form for making wreaths. This is a 10 inch wire form. You can get them at the dollar store. You can get them at Hobby Lobby, all different places. You're also going to need some macrame cording. This is just some pretty mauve I think it's like even called peach but it is not peach to me it is a pretty mauve pink kind of color and we are going to be using this to wrap our wreath I already went ahead and started doing this I have not plugged in my glue gun yet but I will be plugging it in because we're going to need it for when we start decorating this but I'm going to show you how to do this I did most of it just to kind of um, get it done so it doesn't take quite as long on camera, but we are going to go ahead and wrap this and all I've been doing is just pulling off some big sections of the macrame cording and I think I could probably pull off enough that I could finish off this section right here and I'm going to cut that off just using a pair of scissors. So what I'm going to do is just start by kind of leaving this piece hanging out back over on the side and I'm going to just loosely, I'm going to keep that over that way actually, we're going to loosely just start a couple of our wraps going around our wreath frame. I'm just going to, maybe two or three times, we'll do another one. And that's going to help me so that I can hold this into place. So I'm going to pull this so that my back piece is just kind of going across the back. And then I'll start coming in with my macrame and then start to twist it around and I'm pulling pretty tight that's what's going to hold it in place as long as this is being um, wrapped in between all of our layers it's going to hold into place just fine so I'm going to do a couple more twists and turns going around my frame here And then we can continue wrapping this a little bit tighter. So the one thing that we have is the little gap right here that has the um, the wire frame that holds it apart. And my frame is not perfectly round. And I think I, what I'm doing is grabbing the wrong... Got myself a little twisted here. There we go. So you can see that I have that grip right here that's kind of holding our layers of our frame together. I'm just going to go right next to it. I'm not going to worry about covering that up just yet. I'll show you how I'm covering that up in a minute. As I'm going, I'm pushing my macrame so it's tighter together and none of that green will be showing. I'm going to do a couple more passes through. Again, making sure that our backing is staying behind there. So now I'm gonna come back through with a little bit more tighter wrap on there. Again, every once in a while, I'm gonna do a little push through to make sure everything is nice and tight and close together. I'm not too concerned about the top part up here. I am going to put a bow on this, so I'm not going to worry about this being totally close. Plus, I've gotten to the point where my inside is already filled and the outside isn't completely filled. So how I do this when I am done is I just take the end of the cord and I'm just going to stick it right behind all of those layers. And I just start it and then I take my scissors and push it all the way through. This is something that's just going to be on display. I'm not going to actually hang it on the wall or on my door. It's just going to be on display on a shelf in my house. So there we go. We have that done. Now to hide these little areas where this green connector piece is poking through, all I'm doing is just taking another piece of the macrame, cutting it off. And then we are going to just tie it so that it's tied on the back. And you can see I did that with a couple of the other places here on my cording. And just, that'll hide that green piece so it's not sticking through. Give it a nice good tight knot on the back. And 
and then we will cut this off and there we go that is our wreath form so I love this I think it came up pretty cool and I am going to now play around with how I'm going to do the design of this so this is going to be my top part I think yeah, this part up here is going to be my top part because it's got a weird shape to it. The rest of it is about the same. This part up here is a little bit thicker than the rest. So that is definitely going to be the top part of my wreath. I want to add a bow to this wreath. And I was looking through my stash of ribbon. And I have this ribbon here that came from probably either Michael's or Joanne's. And it's a fall ribbon. And I think that might be the one I'm going to go with. I'm not sure about this one. Probably this one probably came from Hobby Lobby. But I'm thinking this one because I kind of like the tighter weave of this than the stripes. And then I also have some of these flowers that I picked up from Hobby Lobby as well because I do not have any kind of paper flowers. While my hot glue gun is heating up, I'm going to show you how I fake it to make it look like I know how to make bows. Um, I, I have a terrible time with bow making, but this system when you're using a wired ribbon seems to work out really well for me. So I start just by creating a loop, just like that, making sure that it's overlapped, and then I'll come in and do some very loose loops on the sides. So we just wanna start by making sure that this size is the size that we want for our wreath, and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to do just back and forth. So all I'm doing is folding it back and forth. And we want to make sure that when we're done, we have the even amount of loops on each side. So I am doing that. So I've got three loops on each side. Now what I'm going to do is I have this floral wire and I take it. I just I'm going to cut off a piece while I'm trying to hold on to my ribbon. I should have done that first. And then I take the floral wire, which is a much bigger piece than I really need. Go through making sure I'm grabbing that first loop and then all of our layers that we put together. And then I pinch it together. And then in the back, I just do a tight twist to make sure that all stays into place. <laughs> I'll even sometimes twist the, the bow itself to get it to hold. But I'm not going to cut this off yet. So I only twisted that like once or twice. And what we could do now is just kind of fluff up, separate our bow. That's what I love about wire, wire bows or ribbon that has wiring in them because it makes it so much easier to give yourself a nice little fluffy bow. So what I'm going to do is this piece right here can be, serve as one of our tails. So I'm going to take my scissors and I will cut that off, but then we have to add our second tail. And again, this is my method for creating a bow. This is just the way I've figured out how to do it that works for me. So I'm going to take another little piece and I'm just going to kind of pinch it together. And then let's cut this straight. Actually, we're going to cut this straight across first. And then what I do is I just kind of pinch this together and then I'll twist that ribbon one more time or that wire one more time to hold that in place. And then if you want, you can even give it a little shot of hot glue to make sure that that's held in place really well so it doesn't fall off. It's going to trim this off. This is the end of my wire. And I'm not going to really, I just want to make sure that we're close to the same. I'll finish off the tails once I'm done putting my frame together. But that's how I create a bow. It's just, I kind of cheat it and figure it a way that works best for me. You could do this in any other way. If you have like one of those bow systems, you can do that. But this is how I just create a larger bow, especially using wired ribbon. And I'll play with this a little bit just to get it perfect, but I'm not going to do anything until this gets onto my wreath. So that's how I do my little, my cheat way. And then I keep this extra tail on the back of the ribbon or wire so that I can tie this onto my, my pro finished product. What I'm going to do next is put this onto my wreath. So I want to make sure that I'm using my, my odd shaped size. I'm just going to take that wire and stick it right through those layers of the macrame. 
I want to put too far apart, but I want to put it a little bit far apart and get those so they're coming right out the back of our wreath. So we have that tied right there. I'm also going to just secure it a little bit more with some hot glue in between those two layers, but for right now we're just gonna we're just gonna tie that on there. So we're just twisting it. If I want to, I can also put some hot glue here too. We are going to just go ahead and cut this off with our wire cutters. And I am gonna dot, I'm not a fan of my hot glue gun. It leaks all over the place. So I'm gonna add a dot just over the top of that wire for one, just to keep it so nobody gets poked by that wire and two, just to help kind of keep it in place. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is just pop a little bit of hot glue in between the bow and the wreath just to help keep my ties into place, but also keep it a little bit more secure, just making sure that we're not push pushing down any of our top layer of our bow into that hot glue, because otherwise it'll be stuck. All right, so we'll just fiddle with our bow a little bit. Play with our tails. All right, so I really like how that bow came out. It looks pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some of these paper flowers. And I think I'm just going to add some on either side. So I have these nice big white ones. Or maybe I need to do pink. So let's start with the pink. I like how the pink is just slightly different than the pink that I used for the rope or the macrame. And then we'll add in white. So we're gonna do a little bit of white and pink and I probably put three on one side and two on the other. But do I want to do two, two pink and one white? How do I want to do this? So I'm going to play with this just a little bit. Oh, I think I like, like it like that. So I am going to add the hot glue to the back of my paper flowers. This hot glue is the worst. I'm going to stick this right there. Put our other one right next to the pink one. All right, then on this side, I'm going to add the smaller one right in there, and our medium size one right there. This glue gun is like smoking. I might need a new glue gun. And then we will use a white one. right next to that. Do I want to do that? Do I want to do it down a little bit further? I'm not completely happy now. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we have two pink on one side and a white and pink on the other. So there we go. I'm loving the way this turned out, but I think this one needs to come up a little bit higher. And then the last thing I need to do with this is just create our little fishtail ends. So just fold your ribbon in half, cut from the center to the edges, and you've got your little fishtail. Same thing with this side. Fold it in half, and then you're cutting down from the center towards the end. So that's our first project. Let's move on to our second one. For our next project, we're gonna use our macrame because we have a lot of it that we need to use up. So we're gonna use that. We have some wooden beads. I have an acrylic disc that has a hole in the top. And then I also have a sentiment that I cut out using my Cricut that says love. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting this together. I'm going to worry about my acrylic piece later. We're gonna work on doing our beading first. I'm going to start off with a nice long piece 
of macrame and we are going to fold it in half. So we have a loop at the bottom and then we have our ends here. So this might be more than what I need, but we are going to, we're gonna do a little cutting of it later on. So there's that. And then we're gonna take another piece First thing we're gonna do is create a tassel. So I have two pieces of the macrame. I folded it in half, so I'm gonna have this loop on the top. And then I have another piece here that I'm just gonna actually use as my way of tying my macrame together. So I'm just gonna pull out maybe two or three pieces and we're gonna use that to tie a knot right in the center. Well, not in the center, but up towards the top of the loops. This way it kind of blends in and you don't see it because I'm using the same color thread that the macrame is made out of. So we have two loops at the top here and then we have these pieces down here. So what we're gonna do now is take our ends. I'm gonna take this first one and I'm just gonna untwist it. So we're gonna untwist it and you're gonna end up with three of these little sections. So we have three sections right here. And then what we could do is play with this even more. So we could take each of these sections and split them up into single strands. So that was what we'll do to create our tassel. So I'm gonna do that really quick and I'll come back and show you what it looks like after we've got that all done. So we'll definitely want to play with this a little bit more, but that's pretty much what you do is just to create your tassel by separating all those strands from your macrame and they come out really cute. And I like that it's got a little bit of a wave in it because it's from the twisting of the cording. So there we go. That is a tassel. We don't need anything that long, but it's created. And now what we're going to do is take that piece of the macrame that we cut and looped and I'm going to feed one end through the opening here and then what we're going to do is, of course it's coming apart on the end all right there we go so we're just going to pull that through and we're just going to make sure that we're even on at each end I'm going to grab some tape so you're going to use some tape just on the ends to hold both of those strands together. It also makes it a little easier for feeding it through the loop. And I'm just using some tape and kind of making it so it's a little bit of a point. So kind of like your um, shoelace, you know, your, what do they call that on the end of your shoelace? Aglet? Isn't that what it's called? I'm going to take one. So this particular bead set has pretty larger size ones and then medium size ones. So I'm going to take one large one, which they have a great opening on these. It's nice size. So I'm going to feed it on and just put it right down to the end where we have our, our tassel. I'm going to then put two of the medium size ones on the end and I think that is all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do two. I'm gonna take my scissors, instead of fighting with the tape to try to peel that off, I'm just gonna cut it off. And then we're going to put a piece of tape on either end. Just hold it, keeps it held together so it doesn't fray, because as you can see, you can fray them and we'll end up with that on the end. It'll make it harder to feed it through our beads, but it also makes it a little easier for feeding it through our beads too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to string bean. What I'm going to do now is string beads onto each side of these. So we have them so they're through two 
strands of the macrame and now we're going to do one strand. I'm going to do this all with the medium size beads and we're going to make a nice little decoration with this. So what you could do is stain these beads if you want to. If you want to stain them, you can paint them. I kind of like the real natural look to these. So I'm going to feed a whole bunch of these onto one string and then we'll feed it um, onto the other side. So we're making a nice decorative piece that we can add onto my little display that I'm working on here. So we're going to keep feeding and can do both sides. All right, so I'm just putting my last couple of beads on here. I have 15 on each side. Three, four, five. All right, so 15 on each side, so they're pretty even. And all I'm gonna do is just easily just tie a knot. Pull them together. And we'll do another one. like so. So then we made a nice little decorative bead. And now we're going to play with our disc here. So we're going to need the disc, our piece of vinyl that we cut our sentiment out of, and some transfer tape. So our acrylic piece has a backing on it. So I'm just going to pick off this backing. The backing left a little bit of that residue, so I am going to clean this off using some rubbing alcohol and a shop towel. These are great because they're lint free, but it'll also help me remove some of the, the kunky stuff that's left on the back of my acrylic. All right, so there's our disc, and hopefully you can see that. But is it better if you sit on there? Yeah, you can see a little bit better if I keep it on here, so I'll leave that on there so you can see it better. I am going to weed my love sentiment and all I'm doing is just going to pull out the outside and then I will pull out the inside of the letter. So we're just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Nice and close up there. All right. So we're just going to take our pick, start at a corner, pull this back. Making sure our sentiment stays on our backer piece which I think I'm pulling up some of those letters. Okay. And then we're going to kind of fiddle with this one a little bit because the piece came undone. So we're going to pull out the middle part of that loop there, pull out the inside of our E. But we need to get a lot of little pieces out of this. So we got to get the L out. That one stuck to my finger, which is perfect. The inside of our O. When you're working with little tiny pieces, it's really hard not to get them stuck all over the place. So I'm making sure I'm taking my time and getting them so they're not stuck on the backing. And I'd rather them stuck to my fingers than to anything else. Because once you get them stuck and they sit for a while, it's, they're, they're impossible to get up. Because especially if you're using a permanent vinyl. So we are going to take a piece of transfer tape. This is just a big roll of transfer tape that I have in my stash. Need to find the end here. And I'm going to cut off a piece to go right over the top of our love sentiment. I'll go right there. And then I'm just going to use my fingers to scrape that down. Flip it over. We'll do the same on the back. 
and then that peels off super easy. That's a nice tiny one, so we don't have to worry about that too much. And then we're going to put our love, and I have the hole right here, but I think I want it to be at a little bit of an angle for when it's hanging off of our... Yeah, we're going to do this at an angle. Make sure that's on there nice and well. These little ones are super easy to do, so we're just going to pull that backing right off. I don't even have to bring out my scraper tool for that. When I cut, I'm going to grab a piece from the stuff that I cut off before, and then I'm just going to pull out some of this twine, or some of this thread rather, to feed through our hole. Maybe. Oh, I had it through. I had it through and then I, I lost it. Stay through. Okay, there we go. So we're going to tie that onto the end of our beads here so we can put this all together. All right, so I'm going to take my little disc here and we're going to feed the macrame that we fed through the whole of our disc or our acrylic piece. I'm going to feed that through our loop. And then we can tie this right onto our beads. <clears throat> and then we'll just cut it off. I didn't tie that on very tight, I left it a little loose so it could kind of dangle. But there we go, that is, I love the way that came out. Now if I want to, I can cut this down and I think I'm just gonna cut it a little bit just like so. And that would be it for that project. So there we go. So I have a nice little bead set, decorative bead piece that I can use um, in a bowl right at my front door as you walk in. And then I have the wreath that also is gonna be on display in that same area. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will leave a late playlist down below in the description of this video for the entire cards and crafts series. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.